Hi and welcome to my video where I'm going to talk to you about my journey in getting a first studying a Master of Pharmacy degree at King's College London. So nobody thought that I could do it. Not a single person, not my parents, not my siblings, not me, not the teachers and definitely none of my friends. I mean I guess they were happy for me when it did happen but no fellow students were like, she's definitely gonna get a first. The person who's gonna get a first is her. Like that was out of the question. So I wanna dedicate this video to people like me out there who really just think there's no way in hell that I'm getting a first. And I just wanna express and tell you that it is possible and I wanna talk you through my journey of how I did it. And um, usually my videos go through like a step-by-step -step thing where I tell you like specific points. But in this video, I'm gonna try and talk about it in chronological order, how I went from my A-levels to the fourth year of my pharmacy degree. I will talk about specific university grades, but I'm not going to tell you the exact numbers only because it's hella embarrassing and I wanna hide those away for a long time. So I was a pretty, you know, average standard at my school. I went to a private school where everyone was, you know, getting A stars and I did not get a single A star. In fact, I didn't even get all A's in my A-levels. I got two A's and a B. With those A-levels, I went to Korea for a year and a half and I met somebody there and then I decided that I wanted to do pharmacy in the UK and moved back to England, but then started off this whole long distance relationship. So before my first year even started, I was in a bad place. So I just was so upset about this whole long distance relationship starting and missing all of my friends. I had zero friends in London. I literally packed a bag from the north of England cried my eyes out, my mum cried, she put me on a train, I got to London with like a single suitcase and that was it. I was starting my first year at King's College. So during my first year of university, I really, I think I struggled more like socially at this point because I'd gone to Korea, made all of these friends, I'd left them all behind and then come to London and I wasn't, I just wasn't open to making new friends. I think I spent a lot of time in my little tiny, tiny prison-like dorm and just studied. It wasn't even productive studying. At this point, I, I spent like two hours on like a single lecture slide. It definitely wasn't efficient. I wasn't really sure how the exams were. And so I remember cramming, cramming, cram, 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 cram. I guess it was like ignorance is bliss. I didn't really know what I was in for, so I just crammed, 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 and I still had energy, and I managed to get through first year, and yeah, I passed. So I've got my transcript here, and in my first year, I studied five subjects, and I got 60, 60, 50, 50, 50. So not those exact marks, but in the tens of those marks. I don't even know how I did that, to be honest. I mean, that 40% is a pass in the UK, so at this point, 60 and 50 is, you know, it's not the best, but it's definitely better than what you're gonna see in a few moments. Let me just quickly put in there that each year for me was a struggle. And so after first year, like I wasn't like, oh yeah, I'm gonna pass. I remember full on celebrating when I found out I passed because I didn't believe it was gonna happen. Now comes second year, I kind of understand what to do. I've kind of settled into King's College London. I've made a few friends. Things seem to be going really well, but when it gets to exam period, I am a mess. People will remember me from my second year exam period. I remember one of my really good friends um, called Tongi Noppa, and he said, hi, how are you in the library? And I just literally, I was studying migraines and I just, burst into tears like I was crying and crying and crying yeah I sat two of my exams thought oh my god I've definitely failed those and when I got to my third exam I had a full-on mental breakdown where I went to A&E and they gave me diazepam to calm this anxiety because I was that crazy I was almost delirious and I decided that I wasn't fit to sit the third exam and then took the diazepam after I took the diazepam, there was one exam the next day, which I, which I could have chosen not to sit, but I did sit that. So out of four exams that I was supposed to sit in second year, I sat three and then refused to sit one. 
and that one I sat again in the summer. So let's look at those grades. Those grades were 50, 50, 60 and 70. So if you look at my results, the 50 and 50 are the ones that I definitely thought I'd failed, which led to my mental breakdown. Um, the 60 is from the one I refused to sit and sat three months later. And the 70 is from the last exam, which I was kind of experiencing the last sort of effects of Dazpam, so I was very calm. That just shows you what your mental health can do to you during exams. I remember going to the library at ridiculous times, so going for like seven in the morning and then coming back at like two in the morning and it was just so stupid. It, it just, I just went overboard and just panicked and it wasn't eating properly. What I used to do is get a Subway sandwich and half it and have half for lunch and half for dinner. And that was, I'd say, probably one of the worst years of my life. Like that time of my life was just so bad that I used to wish that, well, not wish, but I thought to myself, at least if I got run over by a car, I would not have to sit these exams. That's how much it bothered me. In my third year, I moved house to Camden and I was in a healthier mindset. I also, in the winter, went to India to see my dad who lives there and seeing how other people live and just having a, you know, more of a perspective. Like I was obsessed thinking these exams are the be all and end all of my life. But when I did visit other places, I realized, no, it's not. Like there's so much out there. It gave me perspective, it calmed me down and I was determined not to freak out this time. So in third year results, I got 70, 60, 60, 60, 60, but these were all really high 60s. So by third year, I'd kind of gotten control of things and calmed down. What I wanna say is that the grades that you achieve from years one to three, although I died over them, actually ended up not meaning much because unless I stopped there after three years, King's, I don't know about other universities, but King's College London, they put the highest weighting on your fourth year project. And my fourth year project is how I managed to get a first. During my fourth year, I started my master's project. At first, I hated it. I didn't understand what I was doing. I didn't understand what my role was or how to do well. Um, there was quite a lot of internal politics going on at the time, so let's not go into that. But the lab where I was working had that kind of dynamic. And so that really put me off. And I remember just complaining about it and freaking out. But when it actually got down to the writing of the project, I full on worked hard. And I know that a lot of people didn't see this and probably thought, oh, why the hell she got first? But I was in the library constantly. I was with my friend Sabina. We just went crazy. We were writing and writing and writing. And I don't know if it's because I find writing easy, but I already know that I can write well and I know that I can write clearly. And so I think that was a huge part of how I got the first because it's not as if I did some sort of crazy scientific research that was just phenomenal and was published. It wasn't published or anything, but the fact that I could put my points across clearly and my create diagrams that were easy to understand, I think a lot of the waiting was on clarity and logic. And so that's where I got the most of my marks, I think, anyway. My results were 70s, 70s and 60s for my final year and those were high grades there and th that year is what made a difference and got me my first at King's. I never ever dreamed that I would say that I graduated with a first but it happened because by that point I'd gained the knowledge and the know-how of how to sit the exams. Um, I was calmer, I knew how to control myself, I worked really hard on my master's project and I was just in a better mental space at that point. And so that's how I got first at King's. They work you fucking hard. And shall I tell you something? To be honest with you, yeah, I did graduate with a first, but it hasn't gotten me anywhere better than someone who didn't get a first. No one's like, okay, so what did you get in your degree? Not a single person in my workplace has asked that. So I hope that this video has given some hope to those out there who don't feel like getting a first is possible. Remember just to keep at it. And whether you do or you don't, it doesn't really matter. I've never actually openly said this in a video before, but now I wanna say that I am very open to suggestions as to what to film. And so if anyone out there has any idea, then let me know and I'll see you in the next video. Bye.